Hey guys, welcome back to News Bites, and today we've got quite a fair bit of news to go over. Uh, first stop off for today will be the 10th gen Intel release, followed up by AMD's XT CPUs, as well as the recent 3900X price slash, and finally, the ongoing NVIDIA lawsuit. Alright, starting off with the first topic, and well... Looks like my timing for the last episode was kind of terrible. What I mean is literally about a couple of hours after I released, well, last week's episode. <laughs> what do you know, 10th gen release, so um, my episodes will be looked far less relevant. But getting on that, yes, 10th gen Intel is out, and well, is it just me or is it really boring? I don't get me wrong, I've got ahead and released lots of stuff. We've got the 10900K with 10 cores, 14 nanometers still. Sitting over 5.3 gigahertz, 10600K, which is looking like a pretty competitive option. It's roughly on par with the 5600 in terms of pricing, but the difference is it's far better frame rate wise. Not to mention it can be overclocked to really match the 10900K, so it's very interesting in that regard, but it still has a few issues that really make it still pretty competitive for the 5600. We've also got the recent 10700K release, which, well, despite the fact it has got 8 cores and 8 threads, and it's essentially 9900K for $100 cheaper, the problem is it's shadowed by the 10, well, 10900K as well as the 10600K. 10900K is the more powerful CPU, but 10700K is sort of a middle child, and it's sort of looking hard to justify, especially when, for the same price, you can now get a 3900X. And finally, the 10400 looks interesting, it could possibly be kind of competitive, but the problem is it's 10400, which means it's non-overclockable, and most people won't buy an overclockable motherboard unless you've got an overclocking chip. And for Intel, if I remember rightly, their H and B series boards don't come with XMP support, so the only way to really make the 10400 competitive with XMP memory would be on a Z board, but who's going to buy a Z board for a non-K chip? So all in all, they've released quite a few things, it's kind of more of the same, a bit boring to be honest, but hey, there's a bit more competition in the market. Okay, so it has all been, com well, practically all but confirmed that there are going to be some new Zen 2 refresh CPUs. Now, as you may remember, when of course AMD released their new graphics cards, every one of them is either 5700, 5700 XT, 5600, 5600 XT. But what they're also going to be doing now is, instead of having a 3900X, 3900, and that's it, there's also now going to be a 3900XT, a 3800XT, and a 3600XT, all which is meant to be, hopefully, going up, well, not going up, going to be announced on June 16th with the brand new motherboards. It's been theorised that hopefully it's actually AMD's attempts to either keep themselves even more competitive in the market, or... Again, force Intel to be further dead on arrival. Especially when you go ahead and mix in the recent price cuts in the 3900X by up to 15-20% to on retailers such as Micro Center, Newegg, and Amazon. So yeah, all interesting stuff, AMD is also looking pretty damn competitive. And finally, moving on to the last topic, NVIDIA crypto mining lawsuit. Now, a bit of background for this. Around about 2017 and that era, NVIDIA essentially had supposedly obfuscated about one billion dollars in US, well, one billion US dollars in revenue by going ahead and mixing it into their gaming revenue to go ahead and hide from potential investors and, you know, shareholders how good the company is doing in its crypto mining space, considering the fact that crypto mining is a very volatile and unstable market. An amended complaint filed the, well, a couple of weeks back now in California by aggrieved investors accuses NVIDIA of trying to pass off the sales as much as $1 billion in accelerator chips for cryptocurrency mining, well, as gaming hardware. Therefore, it's actually making NVIDIA look a lot better than they actually were, because of course there is now an extra billion dollars in revenue in their gaming side of things, making them seem like they were a far better option than they actually were. Apparently there has been some new evidence brought to light around this, and it includes some of well, NVIDIA's senior management, and yes, that does include CEO Jensen Huang, as well as, of course, his CFO, the leather, leather Jacket. The reason why this lawsuit even managed to be discovered in the first place is, well, the reason why you don't want to have a huge crypto mining portion of your market is, of course, well, everybody was theorizing up until 
well, 2018, when it did crash, that it was going to crash. And following November 2018, you know, around about the big crash of the crypto mining market, NVIDIA's share price dropped 20%. Analysts cited in this suit has, as I've already said, estimated that NVIDIA made a gross $1.13 billion in revenue in relation to crypto mining. So yeah, huge class action could potentially lead to NVIDIA having a fair few issues. More details will, of course, come in a following video if any more come to light. To even the taste in your mouth about NVIDIA, although they have also managed to somehow, by training AI, simply by showing them Pac-Man and the way that it is controlled, they have managed to actually recreate Pac-Man, which is pretty damn impressive, especially considering that also it's Pac-Man's 40th anniversary just around the corner. Anyway, like the video if you like it, dislike if you dislike it, any thoughts or questions, leave them in the form of a comment down below. Links to all the sources for today's episode down in the description as well. Check out my Facebook, Patreon and Twitch page for more stuff from me. As always, this is the 117th Con. Well, signing off. Oh yeah, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. <laughs> I always forget something. Anyway, stay safe out there folks, I'll catch you all next time.